How many of you actually use chat GPT? Gemini. Bart. Bart Gemini is the way. Cloud Day. This is the key. So, how many GPT is the key? Any idea? Any number? Yes, sir. No, I go guess. Oh, more than more. <laughs> there are lots of. Actually, uh, what is happening here is this is a graph. A graph na ek ye graph na ki report ki ye batati hai ki aapki jo bhi is tarah technology 2023 mein hai na, usme kitni uska hype cycle hai. Hype cycle se baat kiya ki is tarah jo bhi and then normally what happens is that you know, after some time it dies down to know that it is either high tea, true tea, or false and then you have a plateau of productivity. So, what you can see, the relative there is a bit of that. A B to a sort of hype, high cycle, it is actually top. Next is the end of the king. Who is taking off that? So it will take time to become mature because to, uh, even for you see that all these models are actually just they have just started to do some uh, new things. So it's the who are cares? First thing, the war of or the battle of uh, large language models is started. So chat GPT announces chat GPT, which is what which is open eye, open eye, open eye announces chat GPT. So Google has to be a part introduced and then it is part introduced in the chat GPT, for it is kind of a and then it is kind of a war. Uh, this is the CEO of Gorilla, uh, CEO of Microsoft, he said that Google is the end of all Gorilla research and I want people to know that we made them dance. And that's true. When uh, open AI chat GPT announced uh, here, Google was actually shaking because they don't have the same kind of a product. And then what happened was that uh, uh, Google was, they released Bart and Bart was not performing as good as ChatGPT. So then their market share slightly dropped. So this is a, like a new one. The Google responded. I think Gemini is here. What they are saying is Gemini is the first model to outperform Google search, a massive multitask language of the chat. Yani ke wo human se bhi upar ye 86, uh, 89 point eight jo hai, it's a human expert, and they are achieving 90. And what happens if they go to 95 and 99? So that's the kind of future we see. So what are the applications of generating AI? How many of you have to say, you have to answer your question, this is clear. You can actually write code. Uh, you can ask uh, code. If you have an assignment, you just don't do anything. Just go to the chat. You can ask for your code for this device on uh, having this kind of input and this kind of stuff. You have a code, you just copy it, see some error. If error comes, then you can check it out. If error comes, then you can check it out. Then you can check it out. So the first thing that I think is that the most important thing is that the teachers are here. They have a hard time to read the assignments. How do they make the assignments? The student will go to the activity and write it out. And then what? Right. So how many of you think that the chat GCD should allow the study? So you know what happened? I think the major thing is that the area, the age of nineteen, eighteen, the age of that, the mathematics teachers they actually go and train on the street. And you know why they go and train? They go and train because they are very talented in language. What the state can do is to train them. If you have a talent, then these kids who are very good in language can do it. So just imagine if they go and train them on the street, they are going to get a bad grade. This is the point. So, uh, uh, I personally think that the jitne bhi nayi technology hai, we should adopt them, we should not actually uh, stop it, uh, but we should know that actually how much we use it. Because the same technology is a kind of a double edged sword. It can be used positively, it can be negatively. So, 
So uh, coming back into your applications there, uh, we have our content creation, uh, we can have uh, art and design, music composition, fraud detection, healthcare, uh, some uh, demand forecasting, and there are many uh, uh, applications which we can do with these generated uh, models. For example, the industrial use case is here, uh, we can use it in, uh, uh, it can be AI in practice education and work in the digital age. Uh, in the work and education, we should use these generative AI models to improve our efficiency. The two come up to, let's say, two minutes of time, you can use it in 10 minutes. You can use it in the same thing if you use it practically. And then AI in building solutions for people with limited mobility. Uh, and generative AI can be used for business growth. Uh, for predictive maintenance and for uh, healthcare, weather forecast for farming, uh, farming and table. So these are just like a uh, uh, few examples. So now you, you remember the title of my talk is from data to dreams, right? <laughs> so how this data and dream convergence works? On one hand, we have data. Uh, the data fuels uh, for creating AI engines. There are vast data or creative potential for novel discoveries and solutions. Uh, in the past, we have a dream, we have a dream, we have a dream, we used to tell dreams. In future, I am predicting, if you have a dream, you will exactly show in a video form that that was my dream. So, we will not show you your dream, but we will not show you your dream. Might not popular in the top right world, they can still do some visual uh, generated data. So, how it works, I will come on, on that one later. So, it will unlock the hidden gems within the data. And there are uh, uh, techniques to doing that for variation of an encoder, it's learning the underlying structure of the data for creative exploration. So, for deep learning and machine learning, especially deep learning, uh, what it is made. Or especially generated AI, we need data can the hidden structures to exploit that without giving a label data, it can actually give you more, uh, it can generate some creative um, things. So, you can see that technically we have GANs, uh, which, which actually compares the actual image with the uh, discrimination, discriminated image, and then we have GPTs, which actually master the language, uh, art of language generation, and then we have relational auto encoders. They uh, learn the underlying structure of the data for creating.